YouTube, what's good, y'all? Today, I'm gonna be bringing you guys my NBA All-Star Starter voting. I'm gonna be showing you guys the 10 players that I think should be starting in the NBA All-Star game. There's been a ton of guys this season that are having incredible seasons, a lot of guys putting up career years. So some of these decisions are actually pretty difficult. So let's just get right into it. Starting in the West, we're gonna start with the guards. Now, right away, I'm gonna go ahead and put Luka in. I think Luka's been incredible this year. I don't think there's really anybody else you know, it's hard to say because he's there's a lot of guys playing at a high level, but he really has just been on a planet of his own um, in terms of the production that he's putting up. And after that, it gets kind of hard, man. You know, you, you've got Steph, obviously, who's arguably having a better season um, than his unanimous MVP season. You've got Shea, who's having an incredible year, obviously over 30. Lillard could, was in the MVP race for a bit there. Honestly, man, like Devin Booker, including Devin Booker and Ja, there are six guys right here that deserve to be starters in the All-Star game. Now, obviously, Steph just went down with an injury. Uh, we don't know how much that's going to affect the voting. He's probably not going to be able to play in the All-Star game either. With that being said, he's still getting my vote. You know, it, it's just hard to take away from what Steph is doing this year. I've always said this, and it's the biggest thing that I always harp about Steph. He's more dangerous without the ball than he is with the ball. I know that doesn't really matter in terms of voting for the All-Star game. But, like, for my eye test and just what I see from all these guys, there's nobody. I think he's the best player on this list. I don't think there's anybody better than him. I think Shea's having an unreal year. Um, if it does come down to it and Steph's injury prevents him from really getting that recognition or whatever he needs to get into the All-Star game, I would give my vote to Shea. But since Steph just went down, I'm vote. I'm doing this on the 21st. He's getting my vote. Now, moving on to the front court for the West. Um, I'm initially throwing Jokic in there. Not even going to really think about it. Jokic is having another incredible year. Averaging nine assists as a center is just absolutely unheard of to go along with the 11 rebounds. If Nikola Jokic wasn't on the Nuggets, they'd probably be one of the worst teams in the NBA. So he gets my vote off rip. He's having arguably another MVP season. And then it comes down to two out of three of these guys. Now, with AD going down, I, I want to show him the same love that I'm going to show Steph uh, because he's hurt. So he's going to get my vote. And this is where it gets weird, right? Because it, this is LeBron James that we're talking about. LeBron James is a global athlete, someone who belongs as a starter in the all-star game but my issue is the lakers don't deserve to have two starters so with that being said and i know i gave steph the leeway with his injury i'm gonna go ahead and remove my vote for ad and my other two votes for the front court are gonna go to lebron and zion um i don't think there's really any other like options here aside from these top four like paul george has been good laurie marketing's having an incredible year for what he's done in the past he's having a breakout season but uh Keldon Johnson obviously you know being the number one option in San Antonio these guys are more reserve guys which I'm not doing my reserves today but we'll probably get into that eventually I just think it's hard to take away even if I didn't vote for LeBron I don't think there's a way that he's not going to be a starter in the all-star game because he's LeBron James so again I know I gave Steph the leeway with his injury not showing AD the same love you know I said I wanted to but uh, that's going to be my front court. So you can see my Western Conference starters there. Moving into the East, we're going to start at the guard position. There's one person at the guard position who I think is an absolute lock, and that's Donovan Mitchell. Um, the trade of the offseason, without a doubt. Um, he's just fit so perfectly into that system, and you know he's just having a great year, bro. You really can't take away from anything that he's done. I think he's obviously been better than pretty much any of the other guys on this list. So he's getting my guaranteed spot. The next spot is where it gets a bit difficult, right? Because if this was like MVP voting and we were going off of if team success mattered, I would give this to Jalen Brown in a heartbeat because the Celtics are legit. They're the best team in the league. Um, he's averaging 27 as the second option behind Jason Tatum. Obviously, he gives you both ends. He's a good defender. Did I just talk my because I was <laughs> I think I just talked myself into voting for Jalen Brown because I was gonna vote for Trey. I don't think I don't think team record matters as much um in the all-star game. I think his numbers are slightly better and slightly more impressive than Jalen Brown's, which was why I was gonna give him the vote. But um 
Nah, man, I'm going to go Jalen Brown because, like I said, the team success matters a little bit to me. I don't know how much it matters for the All-Star game in terms of how these guys get voted, but it matters to me, so I'm going to give him the vote. Um, Kyrie's having an incredible year, too. I would have considered him a bit more if he didn't get suspended and had that timeout. Yeah, I'm going to give this to Jalen Brown here, man. I, like I said, he's definitely giving you more on the defensive end than Trey is. He's averaging 26 as a second option. Trey's obviously the first option on his team. I'm going Jalen Brown. Now, the front court for the East is is where things get interesting, right? So if you take a look at these top four guys right here, Joel Embiid, Giannis Antetokounmpo, Kevin Durant, and Jason Tatum. These are four MVP candidates right now, um, some higher than others. My first pick is going to Jason Tatum because he might be the MVP of the league. He's not my MVP right now, but in many people's eyes he is, and I completely understand why. He's the best player on the best team. He's averaging 38, four assists, which... May or may not be up from his past, but it seems like it's up from his past, so that's impressive. Um, I think he's the one lock. I think there's another lock as well, who is my MVP so far this season, Giannis. I think those are the two locks. I don't need to talk on Giannis too much. Everybody knows how incredible he is. The Bucks are the second best team in the league, so he's getting my flowers there. And then it comes down to Kevin Durant and Joel Embiid. And I think it's honestly insane that they're making us choose, because... You can make a really, really, really solid case for both of these guys. Joel Embiid is averaging 33-10, and 10, man. And, and I think I'm about to leave him off here. I think I'm about to go Kevin Durant. I think, um, I think the Nets would be in a horrible, horrible place without Kevin Durant. Obviously, the Sixers wouldn't be too well off without Embiid either. But um, I feel like Kevin Durant has just kind of like saved the Nets season in a sense. Will Joel Embiid still be averaging 33 by the time the All-Star game rolls around? Probably not, right? But <laughs> leaving somebody who's averaging 33 points out of the All-Star starter game is... All-Star starter game. Not an All-Star starter is unreal. But um, I'm still going KD. I think with all that stuff that happened with the coach, uh, Steve Nash getting fired, Kyrie going through another Kyrie episode where he had to sit out you know, Kevin Durant just shows up in hoops, man. He doesn't really let the outside noise bother him. He's getting my vote. And so that's going to do it. Here are my 10 guys who I think deserve to be starting in the All-Star game. Uh, like I said, man, this year is controversial. There's a lot of tough decisions that are going to have to be made. Like, will Steph Curry be a starter? Probably not because he's hurt. Um, will they go Embiid over Durant? Will Giannis or Tatum somehow not end up in it? Will Trey get the spot over Jalen Brown? Because I think Donovan Mitchell's a lock. Will the Lakers end up having two starters in the front court, even though they're in the bottom half of the West? Who knows, man? It's going to be really interesting. If you guys enjoyed this video, please make sure to leave a like. It helps me out a ton. If you guys are new, subscribe to the channel. We're going to start grinding a lot more NBA content coming soon. I appreciate you guys, man. Everybody have a good one. Peace out.